What exactly does urban resilience mean? And what does urban resilience imply for the way in which cities across the world are planned and managed? This video addresses these two questions. This is probably not the first time that you've heard about the concept of urban resilience. It's increasingly used these days. But just 20 years ago, this certainly wasn't the case. The concept was hardly used, neither in academic journals nor in urban policy. So urban resilience is a relatively new term. Some people have argued that urban resilience is replacing, or has already replaced, the concept of urban sustainability. So what does urban resilience mean? In short, the concept means different things to different people. Urban resilience is what could be described as a fuzzy concept. In other words, it's a concept that lacks precise de definition which is very difficult to operationalize. Other examples of fuzzy concepts related to urban development and policy include sustainability, polycentricity, smart specialization, and cooperative competition. Being a fuzzy concept does not mean that there are no definitions of urban resilience. There are, in fact, many definitions or interpretations of the concept. Just try a quick internet search and you will soon find a wide range of examples. However, there is no agreement about what precisely it is. Because of the variety of definitions, the concept is very difficult to operationalize. For many people, the concept of urban resilience has a strong environmental dimension. However, this is not the only way of conceptualizing it. Other people consider that the concept has a strong social dimension. And others argue that urban resilience is primarily about economic matters. To some degree, this mirrors some of the debates about sustainability. The issues of infrastructure and governance also appear as central elements in some definitions and debates about urban resilience. Where does the concept come from? The word resilience has Latin roots and means to leap back. In engineering, the term resilience refers to stability and resistance characteristics of materials. One way of defining engineering resilience is the capacity of a structure to withstand an impact load without being permanently deformed. Around the 1970s, the engineering concept of resilience started to be applied to thinking about ecological systems and was often used to refer to the adaptability of ecological species or habitats to the changing conditions in which they found themselves. These changing conditions could be, for example, weather related, such as drought, flooding, higher temperatures, lower temperatures, or simply more variation and less regularity of climatic conditions. So one way of defining ecological resilience is the capacity of an ecosystem to withstand disturbance without changing its equilibrium. The concepts of ecological resilience and urban resilience are quite different, but are closely related. Some of the research on urban resilience builds on ideas developed from ecological resilience. For example, some interpretations of urban resilience consider the ability of a city to withstand some sort of disturbance. This disturbance could be environmental, such as flooding, or social, such as war or terrorism, or economic, such as industrial collapse. Clearly, some cities are more able to withstand disturbances. This depends, amongst other things, on local context. For example, cities that are more able to withstand the impacts of climate change are ones that are better prepared, better equipped, and better organized. 
many cases, the concept of urban resilience is considered as the opposite of vulnerability to some sort of threat or change. This means that low urban resilience often corresponds to high vulnerability of the city to a particular threat or change. Meanwhile, high urban resilience often corresponds to low vulnerability. Key questions related to this interpretation of urban resilience are resilience to what? And resilience for whom? After all, the choice of answers to these questions strongly influences the extent to which a city can be considered to be resilient. The notion of system equilibrium from research on ecological resilience can be found in discussions about urban resilience. For some people, urban resilience is primarily about maintaining the current situation or the current equilibrium. This can be described as a single equilibrium or static view of urban resilience. On the other hand, is an alternative view of urban resilience which is not concerned with the stability of the urban system and the maintenance of the urban system. It's about the city's ability to react to rapid change and to evolve. This can be described as a multi-equilibrium or transformative view of urban resilience. It's based on the idea that urban transition and evolution is not something to be stopped, but instead to be managed. Clearly, the ability of a city to evolve and respond to rapid urban change depends on large number of factors. The state of the economy, its quality of governance, its affluence, the condition of infrastructure, to name just a few. At the same time, a key to urban resilience is the involvement and contribution of different actors or agents. These include the public sector, such as governments, the private sector, such as businesses, non-governmental organizations, such as charities, and also citizens. Equally important for urban resilience are the issues of communication and education. These can have an important influence on how policies and actions are made and how they're implemented. So what about the role of urban planning in promoting urban resilience? Should planning be primarily concerned with anticipating and mitigating rapid change or shocks to the urban system in order to reduce the severity of disturbance to the city? Or should it be more concerned with adapting to shocks that affect the city? The short answer is that it should ideally do both of these. Traditionally, urban planning is concerned with anticipating undesirable external effects of urban change and mitigating against them. At the same time, the future is never certain or predictable. So urban planning is never able to completely anticipate all possible future developments or mitigate all negative impacts that might arise. For this reason, urban planning also has to be adaptive and responsive to future changes. Looking at this from the perspective of climate change, this means that urban planning has a key role in addressing and mitigating the city's contribution to climate change by, for example, promoting low carbon transport systems or providing green space to absorb greenhouse gas emissions. At the same time, urban planning needs to recognize that some future effects of climate change are almost inevitable, regardless of how much effort is devoted to mitigating the causes. For this reason, it's also crucial that urban planning not only acts to mitigate the causes of climate change, but also develops adaptation measures which reduce the vulnerability of the city to the effects of climate change such as rising sea levels or extreme weather conditions. Thinking about how to incorporate urban resilience into urban planning poses a key challenge for the future 
of our cities. The next three videos in this series illustrate the different ways in which the concept of urban resilience have been applied and interpreted in a selection of research projects being carried out in Delft University of Technology.